10 continues now. The last few years have been tough on ocean-going salmon and steelhead, and Idaho's most endangered fish, sockeye salmon, are no exception. Sockeye have been trickling into a trap near Redfish Lake, but the numbers are low, and fish advocates say the only way to bring them back is to breach four dams on the Lower Snake River. Six on your side, Steve Liebenthal has more in this Idaho Backroads Report. Every day in August and September, fish and game workers check a trap at Redfish Lake Creek, hoping to find sockeye salmon. On this day, with the exception of one small pike minnow, the trap is empty. One little, little one. On days when the trap does yield sockeye, workers load them into a truck, which lands here at the Eagle Hatchery. Managers mark each fish, take a DNA sample, and inject antibiotics in a complex system of recovery that started in the late 90s. From 1991 to 1998, only 16 sockeye survived the 900-mile journey from the Pacific Ocean to their birthplace in the Stanley Basin, including Lonesome Larry, whose sperm was cryogenically preserved, then spread among sockeye that were captured on their way downstream to the Pacific Ocean and raised in captivity in Eagle. As those smolts started to mature, um, we were able to take eggs from them, select eggs for the, for the next generation and rear into captivity here at the hatchery. Basically sockeye are on life support. It's a totally managed program. Kevin Lewis is the executive director of Idaho Six Rivers nine. United. While the captive breeding program has saved Snake River sockeye from extinction, he says the species remains on the brink. Oh, we're, we're so far from recovery, uh, we're, it's not even close. Fish and game managers predict around 105 sockeye will make it to the Stanley Basin this year. They say ocean warming is causing several species to decline, but most of this year's sockeye run died after managers released them into Redfish Lake. The lake's low alkaline water didn't match the high alkaline water in the Springfield hatchery where they were raised. In 2016, I think we were around 18 to 20 percent survival from the basin to lower granite. The $13 million Springfield hatchery was built with money provided by the Bonneville Power Administration as part of the Columbia Fish Accords. Idaho, Washington, and most of the Columbia Basin tribes agreed not to sue or advocate for dam removal in exchange for millions of dollars for fish recovery. The Snake River Sockeye Recovery Program alone costs more than $4 million every year. We have spent Somewhere north of $15 billion trying to recover salmon over the last 20 years. We haven't moved the needle at all towards recovery. Clearly what we've been doing hasn't worked. We need to do something different. Lewis admits that ocean warming is part of the short-term problem, but IRU and other fish advocates say salmon could tolerate cyclical conditions if most of them weren't killed on the way downstream through the four dams on the Lower Snake River. Meanwhile, managers here will continue their work breeding the sockeye that do return in captivity, hoping to maximize their survival. As we build this up to releasing a million smolts every year, you know, on an average year, we could be seeing between four and 5,000 adults come back from those releases. That's still a drop in the bucket compared to the hundreds of thousands of sockeye that once returned to Idaho lakes, including Payette and Redfish Lake, named for the fish that turn red when preparing to spawn. They announced a while back that, yeah, we think we can restore all these species in 100 years. Well, we don't have 100 years, and I'm not willing to wait 100 years. Um, we need to do something different now. Steve Liebenthal, Fox 9 Now. And now an update.